Hi, welcome to this brand new part, part 85. By the way, parts 83 and 84 are in the members area, accessible to Cloud Kernel and Cloud Ninja members. You can click the link in the description and become a member. If you have not yet subscribed, do so. Only channel which will help you with so many informative contents to clear certifications. We go through questions, we go through options, we cover various concepts linked with each option. Okay, this is just like you are playing a real match and it is not a net practice. It is a real match and that will build confidence to go into certification. So let us delve deep into this question. See, the moment we see CDN, we should always think about CloudFront. So CloudFront, what it does, you want to deliver content with low latency and high transfer speeds. Something like Netflix, it uses similar CDN type services or something like Amazon Prime. These guys make use of CloudFront. Why? Because uh, a lazy bum who is watching the OTT platforms, they don't want any lag because that spoils the experience of watching that episode. That is why CloudFront is our answer. But let's look at other options. Now, if you look at EC2, EC2 is just a compute. You can scale it up, you can scale it down virtually for any type of workloads. You can use it, but it will not help you with these kind of global requirements. The moment you see CDN, the moment you see global, you should always think about CloudFront. Now, let us look at CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a monitoring solution. It is not a solution to reduce your latency. If you want to monitor resources and applications, these guys are just like your security card. They keep monitoring certain people and then they try to, or a spy, you know, the raw department of India, they are like spying. Uh, so it is just like a spy. It will continuously monitor the resources and applications for what? Uh, what are they monitoring for? They are monitoring so that the CPU should not get exhausted. The RAM should not get exhausted. Compute should not get exhausted. That kind of monitoring. If you see, for example, any industry, this is an example of petrochemical industry. Continuous monitoring keeps happening so that the oil should not spill in the uh, this uh, sea because it will affect the wildlife or the fish fishes inside. It, they can die, ducks can die, and etc. Because of oil leaks, so they continuously monitor it. So within IT services, also monitoring is required, and CloudWatch helps you with that and it will not help you with global stuff. And D talks about cloud formation. What is cloud formation? It is infrastructure as a code. That means you want to create, say, hundreds of EC2 instances. You have two options. You can create it manually or you can create it automatically. For example, you have to dig. You know that this is a land and there is a lot of natural gas uh, beneath. You have two options. You can dig with uh, yourself manually or you can use machineries and plug pipelines and etc so that the automatic suction of those uh, petrochemicals can keep happening that supply chain is always on similarly for cloud formation it is just like this automation where if you want to create 10 or hundreds of ec2 instances for example or four or five databases rdis Redshift, etc. You write a code and you run the code, it will get created automatically. Advantage no chance of human error. You can uh, copy the same settings if you want multiple environments to be duplicate of each other. You can do that. So this would be our final answer. Now, this is the YouTube handle of this channel 700 plus videos, 3000 plus questions on what? various aws certifications azure google cloud snowflake tableau and so on let us look at this question which service will help you build conversational interfaces what is conversational interfaces for example amazon.com you have a website now you you must be seeing a lot of websites nowadays a pop-up will come and say hey do you need any help and then you can chat 
that is conversational interface if you want to add that suppose you your organization has a website and now everybody is saying it is imperative to have these conversational interfaces because it is so low fashion to provide a call center number and then ask people to call it, it you have to uh, you know reduce uh, your cost on maintaining a support team so it will be very efficient if you have conversational interfaces with ai plugged in chatbots ai chatbots plugged in and then you also have uh, actual people sitting behind the desk who can talk to you uh, via chat see aws lex it provides capabilities to build chatbots for conversational ai so what will the chatbot do it will automate informational responses see, like for example there are certain things which are pretty standard there are certain policies which are very standard like hey hey chatbot uh, can i return this product amazon chatbot would say hey uh, yeah you can up to 10 days you have 10 days from the date of purchase and you can return it no questions asked so these kind of standard responses okay and then you can improve the productivity of your uh, application bot you can automate basic user tasks you can connect with other enterprise software and then you can maintain granular access control as well now in english lex means a system of laws so similarly here you can uh, tell all your policies to the bots and the bots will remember that and anytime you have problems with any policies it will give you a response so lex is a conversation bot okay you should remember this you can chat to these bots you can know policies it will try to be more uh, productive and focus on your question and so on though my experience with various applications has been that uh, there is a lot to improve with these conversational bots uh, as long as the question is straightforward these guys can answer it beyond that uh, these guys are not great at it so chat gpt unless you have a chat bot with which has a background database of a chat gpt and powerful ai models like chat gpt has then it can provide that kind of efficient services now if you look at transcribe if you want to do speech to text you give a video an audio and you want to convert that to a text for example i am speaking now but if you want uh, the subtitles to be appearing that is something which can be done through transcribe it is not born for chatbot kind of functionality now if you look at comprehend comprehend means it is trying to comprehend something for you that means it is trying to derive some valuable insights from what from the text that is given from the documents it will scan the documents it will try to comprehend what this document contains emails it will try to comprehend and understand what is the uh, kind of intent of this email what is the emotion behind this email is it uh, an allegation kind of email is it a hot email is it just a normal talk and so on it will not help you with your conversational stuff and then you have time stream this is basically a database a time series database like real time you are getting data from these kinesis streams and so on you can store it because this is designed for such kind of data sets to store these data sets which probably you will not get the same performance if you use aws rds or aurora so amazon told who wait for such data types i'm going to give you a database service called time stream but then as you know time stream is a database it is not an ai based conversational system you need something like a lex which is born for this purpose this would be our final answer 
Now this is our next question. See here you have a e-commerce website, something like Amazon.com, and they have done is they have put it on two AZs within a single region. So uh, the web service it distributes content stored in. So you have some video files, for example. It is kept in S3 bucket, and then your website uses that. And what is the use case here? The what is the pain point? The pain point is, hey, you know what? Help me improve my web service performance globally. The moment I see globally, I always think about some option which has cloud front in it. So I have two KPIs, uh, uh, two parameters, global. These are the key words, global and performance. If I get these two keywords, I would go for cloud front. I would not even worry about reading the question. I would just mark cloud front and move forward. So this would be my answer. So Amazon Prime, they kind of make use of such services so that you get the maximum latency uh, i mean lowest latency maximum performance okay and globally even if you are in us you can still view g Kardan. you can still view Pathan. okay you can still view ps2 nobody would stop you will you get the same performance if you watch it from us yes absolutely how because Caching is done on the edge locations and CloudFront is a global CDN service. The beauty with AWS is they created a service for their own consumption first and then they told the market, hey, by the way, you want to use it? And then the market says, hey, is it a proven product? And then they say, hey, you know what? Don't you watch Amazon Prime? We are using it already there. And then people say, oh, wow, that's a great use case. Let me use it. So Hotstar will go ahead and ask to use it. Uh, they will design their applications uh, or some local stuff like Hoi Choi. They might build applications using this and they might also establish or launch an OTT platform. That's how it works. Let us look at other options because it is important to look at other options as well here option a what they are doing is they are changing the storage class see if your pain point is that i have data which is frequently accessed and then i have data which is infrequently accessed then you go with this sort of intelligent tiring the question does not talk anything about problem with the storage class the frequency of access or any of those sort these are all frequently accessed these are all connected to the front-end application now if you talk about api gateways does the question talk about apis no then why are we getting creative and thinking can this be an answer come on man if the question is not talking anything about api we should not even enter this route. So option C is wrong. Then D, it says migrate the e-commerce servers to EC2 with enhanced networking. See, if the problem statements told you that there is a problem with managing loads, there is a problem with, you know, the number of users go up so fast that I need auto scaling, then you can use EC2. Here, that is not the use case. The use case is globally, I want performance. That is the use case. So this will not fit in. These, this option B is our final answer. So if you see here, um, Amazon, they launched uh, the edge locations in Kolkata in India. This is a place in India. Didn't they have it 
uh, education through they, they already had they already had where not in calcutta they had it in bangalore they had it in chennai delhi hyderabad and mumbai and in east of india in kolkata they taught it and similarly they did it in hamburg in germany in germany they already had edge locations in berlin frankfurt dusseldorf munich and etc and in on may 13 2020 they also launched it in hamburg so there are how many edge locations in mumbai so mumbai india 10 in delhi they have seven edge locations chennai seven edge locations bangalore four edge locations hyderabad three and calcutta two edge locations so there are in total 33 edge locations in india who are the customers who make use of edge locations sony live this is the top ott service in india it has been born on aws cloud they use it then who uses a doc online for digital healthcare platform they use it icca lombard general insurance they use it ministry of health and family welfare they use it these are the four key organizations which make use of the edge locations okay so with this launch aws spans 96 availability zones within 30 geographic regions So they have a new region. You must have seen ads of new Hyderabad region being launched by Amazon. Okay. So that's all we have uh, for this part. So by the way, parts 82 and 83, they are in the members area. Click the link in the description section and uh, become a member. Below this video, there is a join button. If you click join now and choose for cloud kernel or cloud ninja membership buy that membership that is which will help you gain access to these paid contents you can cancel the membership anytime uh, whenever you want and uh, the, the charges of these membership i think are uh, on a per month basis you will be charged per month and not per year okay so some people they try to spread rumors that these are all per uh, year charges no these are per month charges and you can cancel it anytime okay the content is available very cheap so make use of these contents the paid content plus the free content will help you elevate your chances of clearing the certifications this brings us to the end of part 85. This is the YouTube handle. Please subscribe. Help yourself get on a cloud journey. And do not stop. If you have already done AWS Cloud Practitioner, do not stop. Go for an intermediate certification. Because industry does not uh, hold people who are just basic certified on cloud. They do not command a lot of uh, value you have to get into the intermediate uh, and advanced certification stage okay this is the first step aws cloud practitioner is the first step please do that and th these videos the way we have designed is even if you don't know cloud no problem we try to explain each and every question in layman's term that is the beauty of this channel so keep working on this cloud journey see you in the next part